The fate of Superintendent Corey Wise being discussed tonight. It takes time for a superintendent's work to really settle in and start to have any impact. We get a preview of the Douglas County School Board meeting and take a closer look at the impact their discussions will have on the school. Healthcare workers are experiencing stress levels similar to soldiers in a war zone. How one hospital program is addressing this trauma by using similar techniques used for veterans and using DNA to paint a picture of a person. How the new process is helping to solve more cold cases that can date back decades. And making room on the roads. We take a look at what transportation planners are doing to make sure there's enough space as Denver's population continues to grow. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jessica Porter. The Douglas County School Board will gather tonight for a rare Friday night board meeting. The board majority has come under fire recently for behind the scenes meetings and an alleged plot to oust Superintendent Corey Wise. Number 7's Russell Haythorn is live in Castle Rock with the latest and Russell, this meeting is both in person as well as virtual. Right, in person and virtual, Jessica, and there will likely be limited space indoors. And check it out. This goes to show you how much interest there is in this meeting tonight. The doors don't open for another 45 minutes, but people are people are already lined up outside Douglas County School District headquarters here in Castle Rock. We have some video to show you tonight's meeting coming on the heels of that huge rally yesterday. Teachers walking out in protest of the new board majority and their alleged secretive actions behind closed doors. Educators and students are also upset that the board majority recently amended the district's equity policy. It's unclear what to expect tonight, but some fear the superintendent could be terminated. I'm concerned that our taxpayers, um, myself included, are, are not necessarily understanding the cost of finding a new superintendent. That's a big deal. And that's one issue in, in and of itself. However, the other issue is Corey is an, a phenomenal leader. So a lot of anxiety on both sides about how this will turn out tonight. Again, check it out. The crowd already lining up outside Douglas County School District headquarters here in Castle Rock. This school board meeting is scheduled to begin at 5 o'clock this evening. We will, of course, continue to follow all of the developments throughout the evening. For now, we're live in Castle Rock. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. Thank you, Russell. And to give a little more context, the decision to try to oust District Superintendent Corey Wise comes as a controversial one, especially in a district where superintendent turnover rate is very high. So we spoke with John Vallant. He is of the Brown Center of, on Education Policy, and we spoke to him about the impact changing leadership happens so often and how that has the effects it has on the schools that they served. One effect when you do have that constant turnover of, of leadership is by the time that any of the programs that that new superintendent is putting in place will actually go anywhere, the next superintendent might be already in office. So if you have a good superintendent, you want to give that superintendent some time to really let some of those programs uh, blossom and, and build some momentum internally. Douglas County's special school board meeting is scheduled to go until 8 tonight, and we'll have the latest on the decision on Denver 7 News at 10. Well, turning now to the coronavirus, in many places in Denver, you can now take your mask off. The city and county let their mask mandate expire. Individual businesses can still require you to wear a face covering or ask for proof of vaccination. Many other counties in the metro are following suit this weekend, including Broomfield, Adams, and Arapahoe. We spoke to a local epidemiologist who says for her, it all comes down to transmission rate. Well, Dr. Chu warned that if, if too many restrictions are removed, we could slow the rate of decline in cases we've been seeing. Well, the Denver Children's Museum will reopen their doors tomorrow. They close temporarily after they say guests were harassing employees about having to wear a mask. In a statement, the museum CEO says even though the city and county of Denver's mask mandate has expired, the museum will keep a mask requirement in place for those three and older. As the Winter Olympics gets underway, there's new attention on how athletes who start training at a young age are protected from abuse. 
Child USA, a nonprofit, took a deeper look into the Larry Nasser case. It's trying to uncover all the ways state and federal policies failed to protect his hundreds of victims. The investigation found medical licensing boards have failed to keep predatory doctors from practicing. Olympic gymnasts recently testified on the FBI's handling of the situation, and they say agents didn't properly act on their allegations. So what we've got is a system that is treating uh, athletes as expendable, and uh, we need fixes in all of these areas where we would have assumed they were already being, uh, they were already working for athletes. The Game Over Commission is calling on Congress to create a federal agency that would oversee the entire Olympic system. It would include a database of everyone associated with sports that were accused of child misconduct. The report is also pushing more states to reform their statutes of limitations for child sex abuse. The Game Over Commission found just three of Nasser's victims reported his abuse right away, while the rest didn't come forward until years later. The Game Over Commission also wants to focus on the mental health of athletes. Three-time Olympic medalist and alpine skier Michaela Schifrin is the latest to open up about her mental health. She told the Associated Press about the immense pressure she feels to win every competition. And she says that unrealistic expectation takes a toll on her. Now, the head of Child USA hopes some of the pressure will go away if recommended policies are put into place. For the future athletes, um, they won't feel like their spot on the team is contingent on hiding injury, hiding emotional burdens, um, and hiding abuse. Uh, so that culture has to change. Uh, for the parents, they can become more confident and happy about their child being in an elite sport. Child USA predicts it could be at least another five years before we start to see more protections for Olympic athletes. The government has an ambitious goal of eliminating all traffic deaths. The lessons others can take from one city that's done that for four consecutive years. And as more people move to the Denver Metro, there's less room on the roads. Coming up, how transportation experts are preparing for more people to move to the Metro.